I was known for having these awesome trips um, at the magazine when we'd go out. I, I always got these really uh, interesting assignments, and um, it was like I was it was planned. Like one time I had to, I was going to Antarctica, and so I had to fly to New Zealand, and so I arrived in Christchurch, and then I got a call saying they were stuck in Hawaii. The, one of the planes had broken down so they couldn't leave. So I was basically in New, New Zealand for two weeks just hanging out. My high school photography teacher, uh, Dave Litchell is his name. I actually have still in contact with him after all these years. Um, he's the guy that got me interested in photography uh, so that I, I had this passion for it. In fact, that's kind of pretty much all I did was photography in high school, which kind of led to my uh, dropping out of high school. That was uh, that was the start for me as far as an interest in photography, but also a love for teaching because he was such a great teacher that I said, someday I'm going to teach. And that kind of led to, I guess, to where I'm at right now, eventually. Yeah, it was Dave that was, uh, that was probably the biggest influence on my life as far as becoming a photographer. Not necessarily a photojournalist, that came later. I started as an art photographer. I really got into um, documentary photography, even in high school. And then uh, that led to when I got into the military. I spent 24 years in the Air Force as a combat photographer. In the uh, Air Force, I was also an aerial photographer, so I flew in the back of most fighter aircraft. F-16s, F-15s, F-111s. Yeah, I did a lot of air-to-air -air photography of other aircraft. So uh, all the promotional stuff that the Air Force did for like fighter aircraft. <laughs> F-16s over Monument Valley. I'm in another F-16, but a two-seater. There's a SR-71 looking at the, which don't fly anymore, but those are the spy aircraft that we flew. And then protests in Europe and uh, combat operations in the desert and exercises in Europe and evacuating wounded. I did a series of trauma centers in Houston and um, Gulf War and uh, that's an F-16 as well. These are F-111s, uh, EF-111s. These are the electronic jamming aircraft they used to fly. They don't fly them anymore. F-111 dropping uh, high drag bombs. This was, uh, this was done do you remember the uh, El Dorado Canyon? You ever hear? They shot one of them down, killed two pilots. And, uh, but they had me go and restage the event as far as photographs of them dropping different types of weapons that they would have dropped. And then there's me flying with the German border. There's a young, thin me with cameras. Yeah, flying with the West Germans. This is on the East German border when we still had East and West Germany. The Russians were on the other side, we were on this side. And I was flying with the Germans covering a um, border patrol mission. Um, we'd get missions uh, to go shoot for the State Department, uh, from the CIA, depending on what was going on. And those are missions where you go and you cover and you give them the film and you never see it again, kind of stuff. Yeah, we actually met in Colorado at the Air Force Academy. I was stationed there. Started dating and led one thing led to another. And now, uh, April, April 6th will be, or April 7th will be our 30th anniversary. Our favorite place to go is Sedona, which is in Arizona. Yeah. Great hiking there, the Red Rocks of Sedona. And you're right close to the Grand Canyon. We love the Grand Canyon. We're from Colorado, so we, we go to Colorado every year and go hiking and, and biking up in the mountains. So bicycling, yeah, yeah we fun. like that. Uh, we have Harleys, so we ride a lot our motorcycles. I have a, uh, a 2006 uh, Road King. For a long time I had a crotch rocket, you know, speed bike, papa wheelies, doing all that, but I got older and wiser and smarter. I don't do that anymore. Well, I just finished, I finished my dissertation last fall, so I'm a PhD doctor now. My research was on photojournalism and learning and learning environments, especially in creative pro the creative process, but uh, how they adapted to those major changes, and not only film to digital, but also digital to, to video. Finished the dissertation, but I'm working on a book based on the dissertation, and I also filmed everything, so I'm working on a documentary film at the same time. Things that I'm really involved in now, obviously the National Press Photographers Association workshop 
the advanced storytelling workshop that we do here every year now, and mm -hmm. been doing that for five years, and uh, I'm really proud of that. Uh, during the workshop, uh, my students participate, and it's one of the reasons that I created the work that I brought the workshop here. I didn't create the workshop, but I brought it here because um, I was really interested in making sure that our students were um, exposed to. And so I created the class as part of that, so that the class became uh, a big part of the workshop, which was one of Steve Schweitzer's dreams, uh, that he could go somewhere and actually have student participation. So that it wasn't just professionals coming from all over the world, it was students. And so the semester project for them is to create a five to ten minute documentary. And so the lunch, the purpose of the lunch every year is so that they can sit down and talk about that project with the professionals, with the pro. But the lunch gives them an opportunity to kind of just one-on-one -on -one chat with I mean, some of the best people in the business that they would never probably have access to. 